This was a big, big cup final. And, and we were looking forward to it, you know. And, and if I'm honest, I struggled not just the night before, but for nights not sleeping, excited, couldn't wait. I'd done loads of cup finals for Villa, for West Brom. I've been loads um, working, but this one got to me. was we were just going to um, look the par, give the fans a nice little day out. A day out's only good when you win. I've been in semi-finals where we've lost and no one cares about a semi-final, no one cares about the losers. So it was about us just applying what we did previously. Everybody working hard, need a bit of luck at times. And we were massive underdogs. Um, so surprisingly, well, I don't think it's surprisingly, but the, the players, we thought we've got a right chance. So we didn't think we were underdogs. We weren't going in there, oh, let's really enjoy the day out. And it wasn't that at all. Yeah, I think we went all the way, except for sort of the Brentford game. I think we went throughout the competition probably sort of being the underdogs and being sort of the team that, you know, it's not going to make it, not going to get there, you know, sort of no point being in it. You might as well contract out in the Premier League type of stuff. So I think that probably drove us on a little bit more and, and brought us together. I mean, we was a, a, a proper team I say a proper team, I say, uh, you know, a team that was ruled together, all sort of fighting spirit anyway. Um, but that sort of galvanised us even more. The injuries to Seth Fabregas and Theo Walcott have forced Arsene Wenger to make changes. Thomas Ruzicki is expected to take the Fabregas role in midfield. I really feel something was good was going to happen when Fabregas was, was ruled out. You know, he's a great player, he controls a lot of games, he controlled a lot of games at that time. Wenger had upset us a little bit. Um, I can't remember the name of the player, but there was a player, massive player for them, who was injured. And he'd, he'd mentioned that they'd arranged for him a suggestion for him to pick the cup up. Well, thank you very much, you haven't won it yet. You know what I mean? So, I think Beget used that as well in his, his pre-match talk. We were quietly confident. Look, there's no doubt Arsenal were a top team of top players, but we knew the the kind of team spirit we had, and we also had good quality on that team as well, that if we stuck to our game plan, which was to frustrate Arsenal, I'll be honest with you, that was it, to frustrate them as long as possible. We had a very collected work ethic, installed by the manager, installed by lads in general, who who looked after each other, who worked very hard for each other. And there was no prima donnas, there was no stars in the team. Everybody was the exact same. That's what made the team what it was. Before every game, you 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 have a like a positive uh, n nervous like, and uh, we all uh, know how important it's it's a game for for us, for the players, for the staff, and for the whole building of fans. I think when we came when we came out and we say a uh, half pitch, half uh, ground, half uh, the stadium, the stadium, a uh, blue. I think uh, we just say, look, guys, we, we have to win this game and we have to give everything and what we've done. Um, do you know, I, I don't think people were nervous. I think people were just looking to get going. I think people were just, I said it before, we could have, we didn't even need a warm-up. We could have turned up and just got, got a kit on and just went out. I think people, boys are just ready to get going and get in Arsenal faces, to be perfectly honest. I think it was just a, a game that we didn't really need, need to talk about. We didn't need any preparation. You know, the tactics were spot on about sort of following your man in your position um, to make sure that you, um, you know, get in their faces as much as possible and try and disrupt them. You know, we all knew that was a better team. That was, that was a given. But you know, we knew that they didn't have the fighting spirit and the work rate that we had, and we tried to instill that onto them. And uh, I think it did. I think it ruffled a few feathers. But once you step over the line, you know, it's it's you against them. You want to win. You don't really care too much about what badge the opposition has got. You just want to win for your team. And even coming into the tunnel, walking out, 
and, and, and seeing their faces, they were really relaxed. And you think, got a chance here. Well, is this the day of destiny for this exciting young Arsenal team that has promised so much but failed to deliver? Or can Birmingham pull off one of the biggest upsets in League Cup history? In the Premier League, the gulf between them is huge. Arsenal gunning for the title, while Birmingham are still in danger of going down. They had all that build-up, and I'd cross, I remember to, twice crossing to Adam, Adam Bridge, who was behind the goal where the Blues fans were. And uh, Adam, let's cross to Adam. Tom, I've got, uh, I can't remember the name, so forgive me. I've got John with me. Hey, John, um, who have you come with? I'm with me, mate. Well, has he gone for the pies or whatever? No, he's here. And he lifted an urn. He brought his mate who'd passed away. He brought his ashes because he promised his mate he'd take him to a final with Blues. I was in tears. I was welling up. You know what I mean? I was really, just absolutely. Adam was, just couldn't speak and neither could I, to be fair. With Arsenal desperate to end their six year wait for a trophy. They may be odds on favourites, but no Arsenal fan will need reminding. But underdogs can have their day here at Wembley. Swindon in 1969, Luton in 1988. Will Birmingham ruin Arsenal's big day in 2011? Referee Mike Dean gets us underway. Birmingham in blue, Arsenal in red. I think one of the biggest things that stuck in my mind was the atmosphere on the day from, from the Blue Noses was just was just remarkable because obviously we went in as, as underdogs. Uh, I think the supporters knew that. Not a lot of people give us a, a hope in L's chance of winning the game. So the noise that our supporters made on that day was just, you know, I played at the New Wembley quite a few times and I would have to say that's right up there with, with one of the best. But just the atmosphere as well, getting to the stadium, uh, arriving at the stadium, all the, the you know, the, the supporters wearing blue, um, half the stadium, full, uh, proper blue, and it, yeah, it was just a sense of pride, I guess. Uh, with all due respect, I don't know whether Arsenal, maybe they were a bit too, well, we've been here before, attitude. For Blues, they were going to enjoy it. They were singing their heads off. It was just amazing. They were defending a pretty high line there, Birmingham. There's a lot of space for Arsenal to run into if they do maintain that line. They want to squeeze Arsenal, no question of that. Ziggich with the through ball, Bowyer get him outside. And it's just as well for Chesney's case that he was, because that challenge could easily have led to a penalty. Well, that's his game, Lee Bowyer's. I mean, it did look close first time of asking. He's so good at timing those runs, and he does it here. Look at that goal, cliche, left back playing him on. Really should have stayed down that flag, and that would have been a penalty. You're right, Alan. You know what? It might have changed the complete game. Could have been sent off. And you think of things like that because when you go 10 men, sometimes it can be more difficult. You see it enough times in football, teams get behind it. It'd be more emphasis on us to come out more open. We might have got away from our structure, what we were going to be playing that day. So it's only when you hindsight, because you get the result, if you don't get the result, you think he should have been sent off. You can look back at it differently because the way it went, I look it back and think that could have, that could have actually messed us up. And then all of a sudden, Ziggich puts his head, it's like, what do we do now? Larson will take. And he gets that crowd of players and they score! Against all the odds! Ziggich on target, it's Birmingham who take the lead! And the favourite Arsenal, who have a major problem now! First goal, it was a corner. And uh, I think the, uh, Roger Johnson uh, jumped and uh, I take the rebounds and uh, Chesney came out and I just uh, jumped in front of him and, and put the ball uh, into the net. Now, I showed him that video before the Wembley game. I took him into our wee office and said, I want to show you something. See if you, you know, just, just stretch your neck. You're going to beat the goalkeepers as well, you know, with a the height, the punch, they get an extra couple of feet with, a, with a, the, the length of their arm. The big thing he was, you know, a big man, what's he, six, seven, six, eight? Yeah. And, and uh, you, you watch that goal, and that is, you know, I was so proud that, that I, you know, I was actually, thank goodness I told him that, you know, <laughs> thank goodness, goodness I said that to him.
training and it was absolutely mental. Like the crowd, the stadium, the it, all the blue noses were going absolutely mad. And then you look that side and you got all the Arsenal lot. Got it. <laughs> There's no thinking these are like something special. I think we thought the exact same. They're going to have to earn the right to beat us today. So we need to show a bit more desire and hunger, a little bit of luck at times, a bit of quality at times. I think we did. On to Van Persie. Oh, Shavin on the right. Beautifully set up as well for Wilshere to hit one. Oh, what a terrific effort by Jack Wilshere. By Shavin. Well, do you know what, that man in the picture there, Jack Wilshere, they have to thank for that goal in many ways. The youngest player on the pitch brought his team forward and got them into that position with his desire and his ability. But you know what, Ewanek must have thought when the ball came into Van Persie, he got this covered, he was very tight, but he just sticks the leg around the Dutchman and gets a tie on it. It's a really clever finish from him. Good time to score that is for Arsenal. I've been enduring a really lucky period. And that was the final meaningful action of what's been an excellent 45 minutes here at Wembley. Nikola Zigic from close range with a header, giving Birmingham City the lead. Robin Van Persie with a superb shot on the turn, bringing Arsenal level. At half time in the 2011 Carling Cup final, it's Arsenal 1, Birmingham 1. But they were raging, and they're all like Fergie shouting, "Well, I'm there!" You know, like uh, Barry Ferguson with his his slick Glasgow accent, and big old, oh, "You know, you need to do your job and all that." You know, and it, it was it. Guys, guys, wait a minute. We've got 45 minutes to play here, and we've, and we've still got um, a lot of time to win this cup. Turned on by Fahey, away by Clichy. Russell backpedalling again. That was an over-ambitious ball. Beausseur does get a touch now, and almost found himself in the clear. Oh, he shot charge down, and against the post! Larson gets it back in. I think that first half gave us a lot of belief going into the second half that, you know, it's going to be tough. We need, we need a bit of luck. We need Fossey to perform exactly the way he did perform in that game and, and pull off great saves, and, and everyone to contribute. And, and say you need your keeper to be on top form. If your keeper's not on top form, we lose the game. Fuzzy's not playing the way he did. It doesn't matter how well we played as a team, we're going to lose that game. So without Ben playing the way he did, being a man of the match, we don't win. The referees decided to let it go on here. Oh, Shabby. was the fact that he had to clear up after as well. It was this coming in. Under an awful lot of pressure at the moment, Birmingham, but standing firm. Uh, Fozzie had a, look, he had a great game, he made, but you expect that from Fozzie, he's a great goalie, so when he was called upon, he made the saves. Then forced to get money to match. He, he didn't have spectacular saves to make, but he'd done his job brilliantly as, he's, as the big man is still doing to this day. They cupped it up, and Oberfemi Martins just stuck the ball in the net. And it goes again towards the towering Zigic. Oh, confusion at Martins, and surely scored the winning goal for Birmingham City! as well as far as Arsenal's defending goes. Chesney and Koscielny just get in each other's way. Nobody takes charge. When Ziggy heads it down, there's no danger whatsoever, is there? Between the two of them, where's the show? He pulls out at the last minute, Koscielny. I don't think you can pull out there. Just put your boot through it, clear it, and that's 
questions later. You cannot afford to pull out at that stage. It is a gift. And as a blue nose, you're thinking, OK, oh, put the flag up then, something's gone wrong, something, they won't allow this. And it was a goal, and there was only a short time to go. And it was like, I was like, I can't believe this. And, you know, our overriding memory is Barry Ferguson running past Cassione, <laughs> just tipping him on the head saying, thanks a lot, pal. <laughs> to score in the last kick of the ball um, was, it was crazy. It was uh, it was a, a weird a weird feeling because um, we had basically shut up a lot of people. Yes, a, a gift from uh, Chesney Kashelny. I'll love him forever. Um, but yeah, look, I, as I said earlier, I, th I think we deserved on the day to win the game. That's what he was known as a fox in a box, wasn't he? You know, he, he was. He, he always seemed. Papa Femi Martins always seemed to score goals like that. You know, and the rebounds are little. Um, one twos in the box, uh, and it was, he, he, you know, he, he never thought twice about it. He would, he would um, fin have some good finishes in the box over the years. I was expecting the ref to give a foul or, or offside or something to, to not let it happen, but it went in. It was like, really? And it, you know, the stadium just erupted. It was incredible. You know, it might as have been 95 or whatever thousand of, of Thurman fans, and it was, yeah, it was. Amazing. But I still have a few minutes. You still have to, st you know, you have to keep keep a clean sheet. And it, them few minutes become a long time in your head when it's such an importance to it. And I think we could have played another half hour. They wouldn't have scored. Like it was, it was like literally not backs to the wall, but just everyone at it. They don't score from this. They surely won't score at all. Birmingham fans screeching for the whistle as it goes back in again. but it was such an achievement um, and it was something I'll take to my dying day. So, yeah, I think you have to enjoy the, the, the highs because there's certainly a lot of lows in football. To win a cup, not only win a cup, but at Wembley, for me, was the greatest Blues day I've ever had, without any shadow of a doubt. Everybody, every player who went to the pitch, Every player who went to the bench, all squads, all people around the club, all fans, and we all together bring the top to the game. We beat Arsenal by two goals to one, and the goal scoring hero is down there now. For moments like that, it's probably one of the biggest moments in, in, in the history of the club, and like people still talk about it today. And, I think they'll still talk about it 10, 30, 50 years. But to be a part of it and, and to still be around at the club is, is extra special. It's something that you dream about as a young kid to win something. And you always believe you will do. Um, but certainly in my career, and maybe in some of the other boys' careers, you know, if you're not in a top six team or a top four team, you know, it, it's hard, it's difficult. It's not, it's not necessarily going to happen. People go through their careers playing at high level and never win anything. So to lift the time cup with Birmingham at that stage was, was unreal and you know to stand up on Wembley to, to do it was yeah it was, it was something I'll, I'll never forget and it was uh, yeah it was amazing. I keep hearing all this yeah but I'd rather have lost that and stayed up and all. Not for me. The game's about winning trophies. Blues won a trophy. They didn't steal it. They beat Arsenal, one of the great teams of that decade. They'd beaten them and beaten them at Wembley in a final in front of the football world, by the way. This is Birmingham's moment. They were devastated when they lost the final in Cardiff 10 years ago. Their two previous trips to Wembley also ended in failure. But tonight, Birmingham can celebrate. Stephen Carr, in a moment, will step forward to receive that glittering trophy. And with it, the first major prize of the season and a place in Europe.
It's Foster, not surprisingly, who gets the man of the match. Second time in three years for him. What an achievement. Yeah, I think a lot of doubts were cast on his ability, weren't they, when he was at Manchester United, but seems to have found a home at Birmingham. Uh, he's really enjoying his football and showing his best form. This is, quite simply, the greatest moment in Birmingham's history. I was that on a high, um, and, and I went the other side of Kari. If you if you watch it back, um, I went the other side of Kari because obviously he was lifting it um, to be that side. So I lifted it with him, all jumping up and stuff like that. Totally forgot that I hadn't actually lifted it personally. So I walked off, and I, and I thought something don't feel right here. So I haven't even lifted the trophy. So if you watch the video, you see me walking back in, into shot, and I say, Keith, I haven't had a uh, Keith Pye was next. I was like, I haven't even lifted it yet. I'm just going to dive in it. A big relation amongst the um, players and the, the, the entire squad and the backroom staff there of the uh, Birmingham Football Club and the fans are enjoying this moment. Well, what a moment for them after all this time. As I say, the adrenaline is still pumped. We'd won the cup. We were getting the 40s and... I was spraying champagne all over the place, and guys were were, were doing doing the same. It was just it was um, it was unbelievable, unbelievable times, unbelievable memories. If I think back, I'm actually getting goosebumps. Think about it. Well, with Birmingham, it was a lifeline that I got given by Alex. Um, so to think then I was going to be doing what I did, never in my wildest dreams. So I, I hold that probably as my number one moment in my career. No, it was the best, best day, best day of my life. And uh, I'm just thankful that I got the chance to uh, come to the Blues and to be able to do that for uh, the supporters, to, to be, with their help, you know, we couldn't have done it without them. I always say, I always say, like, uh, the fans, it's our uh, 12th player. They give us, like, a wind uh, in the back and they, they push us. If we can, they give you a, a, a more power, and, and you just uh, going going until the referee uh, blowing, blowing the, the final. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's great to come to a London stadium and uh, one one of the huge stadiums, arenas in the world, and have parity in terms of the fans, and I'm so. So pleased for the Birmingham fans. As I told, I think I've told you before, being the manager, you know what it's all about. It's obviously it's about winning, but it's about pleasing your fans. And and I know how much it meant to these fans to win this trophy. They've been trophyless for so long. You know everybody was going on about Arsenal's five-year drought, but we, you know, we've had a is it 48, a year, 48 oh, yeah. years or something. Uh, and to do what we did today is, you know, it goes in the history books. These players have made history.